West West show. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Empty Out the Clip podcast, the EOTC. My name is Cams, and I'm here with the brothers in the heart of West Auckland. Well, one of the brothers, huh? But uh, welcome, welcome back to the show, boys. I was, let's, what's up, boys? Tomos. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say a welcome to ours who's um, coming in all the way from uh, Brisbane over the Tasman. <laughs> <laughs> it's either really hard over there, or yeah, or, or, or you're feeling uh you're feeling lonely over there. <laughs> yeah, still training, still training. <laughs> Man, it's hot. It's still oh, it's muggy. Mm. It's like muggy as. Oh, sweet boys, you know, drill man, let's do some shout outs. You go first, after. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, just shout out to um all the the work crew down at Progressive, all the. Youth workers um, that helped me out during the shifts. Um, some of the kids that we watch are pretty, pretty uh, hard to deal with. But at the same time, it's yeah, it's a learning curve for me. Uh, just being patient. Um, yeah, but some of these kids are special, like special. Uh, they 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 have um, special needs, but like you got to give them attention and and. And and like some sort of care, um, because of their where their ba- the background when you hear their stories, um, it's just crazy, and you, and you feel for them at the same time they can be hard to deal with, but at the same time you know you you, you got to understand where they come from and be put into these houses, yeah. But no, it's a challenge, and yeah, yeah. Shout out to the girls that have and uh, some of the guys that have helped me through my shift. Yeah, and yeah, no, that's yeah, that's more shout outs. <laughs> me, oh man, my list of shout outs is semi long, man. Shout outs to my sister Ruth and brother in law Joe who popped in yesterday. It's usually, like when I see my sister and her husband, it's usually because they're coming over because I've asked something of them. So Joe's come over to have a look at the um, the sleep out, and he's probably looking to re clad the whole ceiling. Not looking forward to the pool, but shout out to my brother in law and my sister. Another one, another shout out of, I don't know if all the listeners couldn't remember, but some time ago I was going about catching up with my bro Sonny to to post. So finally, by God's grace, man, we're finally caught up, man. We've had like probably like three outings together or probably two. So he came over, he he saw my story about me putting up the um the new setup for the bubbles and what I had to do to clear to get it done. He sort of felt guilty because he came because I looked like it's all done. So he's been over for the last um two days of in the week last weekend Niaz yes, just helped me clear some more of my trees but then we went on like a, a buddy's date so we went swimming to the sauna and like at a spa and stuff and then we went for lunch oh, nice. and we went for daily tea so nah it's good connecting with old friends here eh? like old acquaintances i'll take a bullet for that guy man there's not many guys that i'll take a bullet for but he's one of those dudes bro like you know he, he'd, he'd do the same for me in a happy but yeah i look forward to catching up with him again because man we'll be manifesting now um catch up for some time and um yeah we're probably gonna go out and see one of the bros dion who's staying over the shore so yeah shout out to my also nanny um yeah i know he tries to listen in when he can but yeah he's doing a lot of courses short courses to help him pass his time um another one's to my um to my boys Elliot um Binati and Gosta so shout outs to NSL always letting me flex the, the garments when we're jumping on here and then um yeah another shout outs to um to you Cams for putting in the work man it was nice to have a visit from the CEO of the Western Network popping to the barber shop <laughs> today got a little bit of a glimpse of what happens on a Saturday morning when someone comes late for their haircut but it was just good to <laughs> see um yeah just the work that he's putting in and it was nice to have a mag sitting on the counter as well and the bro reading it and just really getting an understanding of how much work Cams is doing in the community and just for us as a Pacifica minority in Auckland um, and another to my girl Lauren, man. She's been putting in the work, and her friend Nalo and Mikey, man. These girls. So I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna sound like a guy saying it, but like I know when Yasa sets up the drills in times of time frame for Polyfest, the window is like two hours after school, right? That's as much effort as you should put in for a twenty minute set at Polyfest. But man, when I'm picking up my gang and solid, she finished her school at three. I'm picking her up at now seven thirty. So when you see them drag out the tr- the, the practices past six o'clock, it should be first place, huh? 
Because uh-huh. too much for us to expect uh-huh. good things. So if they don't place yeah. in the highs, I want to tell you next year, man, have a hard think about what you want to do next year, man, because I don't believe overtraining the kids is going to do them any good. Um, but yeah, shout out to the Avondale Summon group, and yeah, and also to my, my mate Sonny's son, Cartel, who's in the Tonga group. So I think this week is just polishing and performances this week before Polyfest on Friday, Saturday. Um, and also my son will be performing with Messi at the Polyfest for the first time. So yeah, nice. the man's in the, um, the Kapaka, I think it's um, oh, Tanganui, Tanganui group for the special school. So yeah, hopefully I could get along to that. But yeah, that wraps up yeah. my shout outs. Nice, who's nice. Um, I want to make a shout out to um, two guys who popped in this week for a bit back of Monthly Five. The first one is uh, Robert Wisi. Oh, the, the man, oh, from, yes, so the man King doing Ranui. good things <laughs> in Ranui in our community. Eight Still going. Eight double. <laughs> Eight three five. One three five. The original one three five. The original Ranui one three five. Um, yeah, man, he popped in on Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. We did the podcast on Tuesday. Just really a catch up because he's been on the podcast before. Uh, a couple of times, which is always good. Always good to catch up with the with the king of Ranui, you know, find out what's going on in the neighborhood. You know, you know the neighborhood's yeah. in good hands when Ranui one three five and and Rob Luisi is there. So now nah, man, I had a good catch up, it's all on the podcast. But one thing that was interesting to me is the, the pop up store that they started doing. So they had a they had a vacancy in uh in in West City Mall. So they they went in there before Christmas a few weeks few weeks before for christmas to put put a pop-up store there and all it is is just they're getting creatives from around the neighborhood um to bring in their bring in their products and sell their products through their store and mm. they'll just get a, a little a little money back from uh selling their stuff so you know it's a good uh initiative for the community especially especially the, the polynesian community out west yeah, yeah. so yeah, man big ups to um to those guys eh? what what and what they're doing but yeah you can you can you, you, you can listen more about that on the on the podcast. And also, want to shout out to a guest I had today, um, the um, earlier on today, um, Jamie Ohio. He's one of um, is one of Tumman's mates. Um, so he's he he's a co-owner of um of of Ranui Smoke. That's the the low and slow barbecue joint, new barbecue joint out in uh, the Matter uh, Rugby Club. Oh, oh yeah, man. yeah, I've seen that. Nice. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. This, I heard it's me. Oh, some one more. Yeah, yeah. Seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good chat. It was a good chat there because he's a little, he's a little startup, you know, and it's off the back of something that he's passionate about, and you know, doing a little side hustle. And next minute, turning that side hustle into a business. So you know, he's he's uh he's from he's he's from Ranui, and uh you know he's he's growing up in the area. So you know, it's good to see him. And do his thing there, and 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 a little bit inside of what's going on in the in the future and their and their and their future goals. So uh, mm. that was a good chat. It was a good chat. We talk a lot about NRL too because he's an NRL fan, especially NRL uh, fantasy because he's in that, and he's pretty honest with it because like he was telling me all the all these tips and stuff. But I don't really do the fantasy. I do the draft. But uh, now nah, it was an interesting chat. Interesting chat. So that's another one to be coming out. I'll probably drop that um, today or tomorrow. So that's uh yeah man so that's me and also shout out to all the other listeners to all the other podcasts on the west network um find us at the on the eotc podcast um facebook group page it's a private page so just go in answer the free questions and you'll get in it's your chance to throw your comments or get some articles up on there on the facebook page and then we'll talk about it on the podcast all right boys hope you had a good week uh, let's start with you Alves. how was your week been um uh, uh yeah, it's working now, um doing this working out here down at um this place uh, area for Jim the Lee. Uh, uh the houses the houses are like mansions, eh? These kids are these kids are spoiled to be honest. They live in like this one child there's one a fourteen year old I looked after on Friday last week, but I still was in the mansion like yeah, um, yeah, just work, same old work. Um, I took uh, one of the students uh, to her school on uh, Friday. Um, that was challenging because you know I'm, I'm I'm new here and I still don't know, you know, my bearings around the place. 
So I had to ask the girl, okay, you need to, you need to show me where to go. So um, she helped me because I'm not really good with GPS either. So yeah, um, her name's Liara. She helped me uh, drop her off to school. Because some of these kids, they'll use it like, you know, if they know you're new, they'll like play on it. Like, oh no, it's that way or, you know, it's this way. No, but we you got to school on time. Um, now I know uh, I'm, next time I'm going to, after I drop her off, I want to go to the bakery. <laughs> I want to abuse her. They <laughs> abuse her. No, it was just challenging, just work. Work and um, from have it. Oh, yeah, got, I got paid, so I got um, first pay slip, first paycheck. Um, went straight to the barber. Shout out to NK Barbers. That's yeah. all my, uh, my son, my son's good there. Um, no one in there, eh? The boys from La Salle, NK. Oh, I don't. Oh, yeah, now, uh, yeah, and I saw when he, I saw it on your story. I was like, I said, shout out to these guys, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, oh, this one, week, week, week. Uh, we signed to the gym. So when I, yeah, start paying my rears off and start hitting back to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, shout out to my brother-in-law. He was his fortieth this week. Um, man, man, food, man. Yeah, just crazy, a lot of food. Um, so that's why I'm going back to the gym today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how about you? Let's. How Wait, I've got a question for you. I've got a question okay. for you. You know, you don't have to say how much you got, but your first paycheck is Australia all that? Is Australia all that? Yeah, bro. <laughs> that's, that's the worst for me. Like, yeah. I don't, because I only work three days. So two days I worked was induction days, and then um I worked one full shift, and I just got under a K. You know, and that's one week, and then, bro, right, that was oh that's including a sleepover. That was like damn, like you well, you know. Now so I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work forty or six close to sixty hours this week because I get paid for what I need. So yeah, I can't wait to get that check. Um, I need a car. I need to save up for a car so I can get around. Mm. Yeah. But no, I, you know, like, yeah, the money is good. The work, see, like, you got it off. How I see it is, they only, you know, you put up with the kids. They're, they're like six, seven. Um, you just got for a woman and they, they yeah, look forward to payday. Yeah. Yeah. At least you're being paid, was that's the main thing, man. Pay for yeah, your money. Yeah. Just today. <laughs> and your patients yeah. just there at the same time. Yeah. But now, yeah, at the end of the day, like, they can scream off at you. They swear, you, these kids are, I gotta be on names, like, these kids are seven, seven, eight, and they, they swear at you, they know how to manipulate you, you know, or not. Well, I can do this, I can do that. You know, they, they know that you're a new worker, but I just like, oh, no, hold on. I'll go ask the other youth workers what they can You know, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> sounds, sounds intense. Oof, but good on you, man. That's the one. No, it was short. <laughs> man, my week's been, um, let's be full on, eh? Let's be full on. I had a cry on probably Monday. I had a cry on Monday. Um, Cause my neighbor, he's, um, he's probably like early stages dementia. But um, yeah, I just, I seen him, like I see him every morning and I know my neighbor, she's touched on, um, she touched on her husband not being well, but she never really said, explained what it was. And she was home with um, a broken wrist, like maybe last year, like when I checked my job in. And so just over time, like, the kids have said, like, um, oh, here yeah, the neighbour was talking to us. We went over and he was saying something about his car valley. And I didn't think anything of it, but it wasn't until I was home with my son. My son had just finished school, taxi dropped him off, and then they pulled up. I saw the, the Inkia sort of, like, walking in and out of the fence at the top of the driveway, so I didn't know what it was. But then he came inside, or, like, he came to the door. And my son was like, oh, Dad, we got a visitor. And the Inkia guy come inside and... Just at the bottom of my stairs, um, 
Yeah, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen that look, like the look of someone like tired or it's like they're confused, like the confusion look. Because I've seen it many times in my life, like people who are, you don't know where they are, like they've lost, they like they look lost, literally look lost. But yeah, the old man. So he must have a few hours where he's by himself, you know, during during his work, his day. And yeah, man, just really break my heart, like, it's not my place or to sort of tell families how they should be looking after their elderly. But in my heart, it's like, man, my parents were on their last years. They had, like, three of my siblings with them, you know? So it was like they had a turn each, like, being with my parents. But this old man, he's he must, he must, he doesn't even look like he's in his 70s, man. But he's, I know it's only a few hours, he might be by himself, but he just looked like he just... Like, you know, I don't want to wish the worst for him, but it's just by God's grace I was home. And then it happened again on Tuesday, man. The same thing happened. He was just by himself. And I could see, but this time I saw him, like, just look, he looked agitated. So I had to look over the fence to see if he was all right. Yeah, I just felt broken for him, man, because I can't imagine, like, me getting old and being, like, just forgetting, like, just walking out the front door of your house and then you don't know where you are. Like, that's what I saw yeah. when, I, when I looked into his eyes. Like, even when I sat him down, I said, oh, I'll take you home. He looked over to his house and he was like, oh, that's not my house, you know. If you imagine being lost in your mind like that, like, if, you know, that's the early stages of dementia. Like, his short memory's gone. And, yeah, I've sort of tried to sort of just advise that the, the daughter who doesn't live there, because they've got cameras, they can monitor him. He's got a smartwatch. But to me, it's not good enough, you know. But that's just my personal thoughts, like how they could be looking after him. Yeah. But yeah, man, that was hard. It was like a hard start to the week. But then, um, yeah, shout out to my bro Noka again, man, coming with the pressure, man. You know, this pressure, like, about getting shit done. <laughs> so my bro's been coming over. It's like, sorry, man, when are we going to finish painting the fence? So now I'm grateful for my um, kid's boyfriend, Leroy, and, and my mate Sonny coming around just to clear out some more of the trees that have overgrown from when I first cut them all down in November. Just so I can paint the rest of the fence. Oh, yeah, it's challenging, man, because some of the trees that we had, like, they were my laws. Shit, eh? Like, fuck. Even the brave bought a, like, a chainsaw over, trying to keep you with the Ely. Right. Like, something as small as, like, a pencil. He was trying to cut off the, the um, chainsaw. He wasn't having a bar over there. Eh? Uh-huh. Like he was trying to cut, it was like, the, you know how you see a samurai sword trying to give you the, the sheet? Nah, wasn't even doing it, man. So we had to use an axe. So that's been my golengi for the last two um, two days, <laughs> using the axe, trying to cut through a tree. But you know how they say you count the rings on the inside of the tree and it shows how old it is? So when we cut the tree in half and you can count the rings, but there's more than 80 rings on this tree, bro. So the tree must be at least 90 years old. But it wasn't very thick, like, you know, it was just real tough to cut. So, yeah, shout out to whoever beat on the tree and made it grow like that, man, because that was my lord. <laughs> and I always get on myself twice. It was funny because I texted my mate because he said, I'll be over tomorrow, bro. I go, oh, what for? And he goes, I'll come and cut that tree. And I go, I've already done it. And he's like, oh, what? Because, yeah, I remember when he left, um, Leroy went up there to have a go again. But, hey, got said like, because, bro, that tree trunk, bro, was kicking our ass. But I, that's been my week, man. It's just been, yeah, man, emotional and tiring, and then yeah, <laughs> funny at the same mm. time. Sure, look, man. Yeah, man, I had a busy week too, and you probably guys know because the the issue two of our West West Sports magazine came out uh, yesterday. So it was pretty. It's pretty funny because I went I went over to um to Let's on uh, on yesterday for a haircut. So and I just I was just filling them in about how I was doing those last minute articles, <laughs> which which you know I'm not gonna ever do that again because that was like that was down to the wire sort of stuff. Eh? But uh, no, nah, it had to be done. It had to be done. But no, nah, man, it was a good day. Eh? Um, I got more m- more copies printed this time around, and so there's there's stacks of them out there at, at the stands out there. And it's also online, so managed to do, put that online. Um, yeah, man. So, does it there? Oh, me, right? Issue two. It's hard work, eh? If you think about it, 
like, I mean, it is hard work, but it's that it's that hard work that's fun to do, so it doesn't feel like hard work. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you know, I was I was thinking because I was like looking at the whole finish finished product. And I was thinking, damn, that's it looks like hard work. It looks like heaps of work, but then at the same time, it doesn't feel like heaps of work. If you know what I mean. So I yeah. think three weeks in between is enough. Is enough time, eh? Just enough yeah. time, you know, just to not be too pressured. Even though it was my fault, I put myself under pressure by even at last minute. But it's a good time to get things sorted out, eh? So no, no, that was good. That was good getting that. But then I think I mentioned I mentioned before. I've been kind of slack trying to get some people to come in as guests for Back on Movie Five. So I need a. I need to sort that out. I need to sort that out. But no, nah, man, my week's been good. Eh? Getting work done during the day and coming home and, get, and getting the West Coast Network stuff done at, at night. So, yeah, man. Proud, proud. And thanks, proud. boys, for uh, supporting too. Being, being, being part of it. <laughs> Alves, we might have to get you to, to send over something to put in the magazine, man. Well, I love what? I don't know, some the day in the life, a day sentence, in the life of you, Bricker. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my life over here in Oz. <laughs> All right, boys, let's get into our topic. So, I thought um, a whole bunch of a, a, a bunch of topics I thought we could talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of politics stuff, right? So, started with I think it was a couple of weeks ago, or even though we we're talking about the week that was, but you know, it just makes sense to. To plug it in, but the Hurricanes women's rugby team they did this haka right, and in the haka there was words that referred to the government as a bunch of rednecks, which <laughs> the um, which the government didn't take too lightly, and also the Hurricanes management didn't take too lightly either. But then it's kind of like um, it's kind of like sort of like what the haka is, you know, it's a. It's like a war dance. It's like something to protest. You know, it's part of it. It's part of the culture. You know, you can say stuff like that. You can say how you feel. It's freedom of speech, right? Yeah, yeah. And for yeah. the government, and for the government to say to criticize it, or for um, the hurricanes management to scramble trying to get some PR and say, no, nah, no, nah, we didn't, we didn't mean that. We didn't mean that. You know, it's like goes against what the hacker's all about. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, you know, like Absolutely. it's always been a challenge. It's always been something that you know, a, it's, it's like a challenge. It is a challenge. It doesn't matter whatever the word spoke rednecks or what. You're challenging an idea that the government put across, right? And we've heard it from all from the Treaty of Waitangi stuff. What David Seymour's trying to do, changing the changing the Treaty of Waitangi. What you expect indigenous of this country to just stand back and just let it happen nah we're gonna say something right like this this country is founded on protesting right it's all about like protesting the accepted thing right and the haka mm. and doing insane stuff like that that's part of the whole it's part of the culture it's part of being being the haka you know and we're gonna touch on something else that happened too that's off the back of the story but uh do you guys agree with with or or, or how do you guys feel about like the the reaction that the Hurricanes women's team is, has had for the haka they they performed. Well, I think clearly it's a it's a um, it's a breakdown in um, communications, but it also shows like this is the the women's game, right? It's new, it's new, and if anything, like to sort of like if you're gonna like summarize energy within the organization. Support the women 100%, man. They're now being paid as professionals. But for them to sort of be um, suppressed into how they need to, you know, exercise their rights as being women players and expressing something that's of the... Because, like, you're not just talking about the Hurricanes. You're talking about the whole region. So for them to be able to want to perform it, there's more than just one sort of, like, standpoint of how they feel towards the government. I think it was a beautiful thing, man. Especially to be in, um, like the 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 haka to be something that's of this native, like this this country. I think Danny Soros that should have come out of there would have been the um the government themselves, man. Like 
it's shown the first hundred days of what they've been doing. They've obviously had a clean slate of how they want to get rid of a lot of things. But I think that um, the Hurricanes management, I don't think they had the right to go and do that. Because at the end of the day, without the players, there is no women's team, you know what I mean? And if they collectively agreed, yeah, let's do it. You know, like you've seen in American sport, if they didn't want to stand for the national anthem, take a knee. If you don't perform the actions, you can stand on the sideline. It's easy. He can pick a side. But you see the whole team down there, that says a lot, man. It says a lot that they don't agree with a lot of things that's happening with the government right now. So, yeah, I feel I feel the management of the um, Hurricanes need to apologize to that women's team because who are they to tell you how you feel? You know what I mean? That's their suppressing shit, man. They shouldn't be doing that. It's 2024. And this government's taking us backwards when we're talking about like how we should be expressing ourselves and you know how how much more are they gonna censor? Are they gonna start banning us? You upload our videos and all of a sudden it's just mute. So not nah, good on them for doing that, man. I think it's it's cool. It's cool to be you know to be a collective like that and be an actual franchise. I think that's gangster, man. So good on them. I applaud. How are you upset? How are you yeah, it's, it's 2024, like, um, there's more important things the government should be worrying about than just hey, man. Um, you know? Preach it, us. Um, and also, I think there's, um, I think there is, there's some snitches in the government because how, who, who translated that haka to, you know, there's some, um, people in the government, like, that are obviously moldy. They must have translated it and snitched, you know. You've got to be careful for those, um, <laughs> those politicians out there. They say they're for the Maori people, but hey, nah, they're saying bad stuff about, you know, us, you know, the politicians. Nah, but, yeah, I, I agree with what Les was saying. Like, it's 2024. There's, like, there's way more important things that um, the government should be focusing on, like crime. Homelessness as well. They take putting their energy into the sucker. No, but good on the ladies uh, sticking and doing it. You know. Yeah, so, no. a, so a similar story happened this week, actually. So, there's a there's a there's a high school actually, high school in in Palmerston North called uh, I think it's Freiburg Freiburg High School. Well, um, David Seymour went over to visit visit the school and uh, the students. The haka in front of David Seymour, right? And the student in the front leading the haka, he actually leaned forward and spat at the feet of um of David Seymour, you know, and that caused some outrage to the principal of the school. Um, I think the kids got in trouble, students got in trouble, t- detention or something like that, and made to apologize. What? Um, David Seymour, he, he his reaction was, "Oh, you know what, um." You know, is part of New Zealand culture, blah blah blah, and what, what, and what about the splitting? Well, you know, I agree with what the school, the punishment they laid, the school laid down on on that on that part of it. So, <clears throat> so to me, if you look at that, what the Hurricanes girls did, and the reactions to that, and what David Seymour and the principal of that school did to these students, it's the same thing, man. It's the same thing, and because this story was on the news on Friday, and so. They actually interviewed um, Tamaiti to ask, yeah. "Oh, is this part of the haka? Do you, are you supposed to do that? The spinning?" And and Tamaiti was in, "Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah, that's what that's that's normal. It's normal. It's a normal thing. Like that mm. that that you should take that as like part of the haka as a whole thing, you know. Mm. Uh, and it's not it's it's not something that it's not something that they just did out of the blue. And it's you know." It's just part yeah. of the hacker. Yeah. Like you gotta, you gotta take the whole thing as it is, not just take bits of it and what part you don't like. Yeah. Because that's a coordination mentality. That's when exactly. You take, it. When you take what you don't like and you and you keep what you like, you gotta yeah. take the whole thing as it is, man. So, you know, it's a lot of that going on with these two stories. The same result, same reactions, the same kind of thing. Thinking, what 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 comes out of it. So it's, it's pretty interesting, eh? When you think about it, it was interesting to me. Yeah. That, and I'll give, give it up for, for, for TVNZ News for actually going to ask some real 
activists mm-hmm. like some yeah. to ask yeah. oh ask them the question oh so are you is that part of the, the culture and all that and and if they say yeah yeah then what's the problem yeah what's the problem that's 100 percent you don't see a government walking into a marae right and if they they lean out to do the hongi how many are doing high fives and fist bumps Fuck, they're embracing the culture. Embrace the culture yeah. like that. You can't just pick and choose when you want to go, Pascal Lima, Pascal Lima. Fuck, you walk into him, right? You hungry. That's the first thing you do. So these guys should not no, inherit, like, embrace it like that and just look at that one kid who did the split. Because that's a challenge, man. That's a challenge. If they if they don't understand the culture, well, then obviously it's a challenge. They don't understand the challenge that's been set before them, you know? And because Seymour should bloody have a little bit of something in turn, like, of what the culture is because he's 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 yeah. from he's got a moldy background that's just him picking and choosing he's cherry picking now you know he I either... guess it'll be it'll be different eh? it'll be different if the kid like spat out his face oh yeah you know? he spat out his feet <laughs> no that's yeah yeah that's part of the culture but yeah better a spit than a full-on model of a of a or a fool in a in a polo <laughs> <laughs> that's Man. Well, the only way I can yeah. see the if the school had anything to say was that oh we'd have a rule at school no spitting and the you know no one like on the playground of that you can't spit. <laughs> that's the only that's the only way eh? yeah <laughs> but even still during a performance it's part of the culture mm. like you know you can't you can't you can't sort of put some red tape around that sort of stuff man you look at look at yeah. remember, I mean there was an article where. A teacher was trying to tell her who who, who cut a kid's tongue off his off of off, off the rope on their neck, and she was like saying, "No, nah, you can't do that. I've had the son since breath." And you know what happened to her, man? It's like you know, people it's like people need to be, you know, it's culture, but it's part of the the country, yeah. like you know, heritage, man. These people, it's man, hated. they were here before the still stolen land, man. These Balinese bro need to be careful, bro. Mm-hmm. It's been coming, bro. It comes, bro. And all these Utis come out of the ground, Charlie. All <laughs> these people will be on back, going back to England. Mm. Yeah. No, no, good, good. Um, so, what else happened in politics? So, this week, um, we finally got to have Goriz uh, Garaman. Now, she was the Green Party um, MP that got stood down a, couple, uh, a month ago. Of January for um mm. for shoplifting, well she's yeah. had a court case and um you know we went into the details all the details were, were released about what happened, so yeah it's public knowledge now that um her her shopping spree <laughs> her, her shopping spree started in October twenty second last last year um down in um in Wellington yeah so she stole she stole she stole um garments valued at um just under seven hundred bucks in that store. And then she comes up what? to Auckland. She comes up to Auckland, and then she steals at one store one day two thousand and sixty dollars worth of of items at a store in in Ponsonby. Um, and then she goes to another store in in a new market called um Standard Issue. I don't know if that's the shoes or another clothing store, but um she takes uh, four hundred dollars worth of clothes there. She goes back to the Ponsonby store the, um, the in, in December twenty third, and she steals five thousand seven hundred and seventy three dollars worth of clothes um, from that store. And then that that store where, where she got caught. So there were there, were, there was like a, a garment that was in plain view, right? And um, it was a, it was a case of she's taking it, she's gone outside and the. And the store manager looks, sees the garment, looks away. She takes it. She looks back, and the garment's gone, and she's gone. So she follows her to the car. She follows her to the car, approaches her, says, "Oh, excuse me. I think um, you've taken something in your bag. Can I look in your bag?" She says, "Nah, you can not allow." She denies it, and that's it. And then she, she, she. No, oh, wait. She actually goes with the manager back to the store and she just explains gives her excuse and she's allowed to go so she goes um a couple of hours later her friend comes back with all the stuff that she stole from their store and gives it back and that's that's how she she gets found out 
Mm. Yeah, so um, she's found she's found guilty, and her sentence is on twenty fourth of June. So that's yeah, that, time, that, that's all the stuff that that's come out. But um, I don't know, man. Like we spoke about this before when it happened. Obviously, the court case didn't happen yet, but it has, and this is the result of it. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, man. If you got an addiction, man, get it sorted, eh? <laughs> she tried to use her money. MS, MS is far from from what she was doing. But she, MS is more of a neurological. You can't lift your fingers and you lose the feeling, and like you know, like you have a strike, man. But she was clearly doing what exactly what she was doing. If she managed to go back and tell her friend to take all the stuff back, I mean, what did she think that she was gonna step into the shop not being known who she was? Because she's like she's been a she's been in politics for the last six years, man. So. I don't know what, what in her mind thought it was all right. Unless they've explained, like, okay, she just verbally do, will not know where she is. And she'll walk into the shop and then everything's for free. Like, come on, man. She should get a sentence just like everyone else. If they're cracking down on patch members wearing patches in public places, same thing should be yeah. done for her, man. Should be no excuses. Should be no um sort of special treatment. But it's just like a... It's like the... The curse of the Green Party at the moment was okay. everything that's happening, eh, this year? Yeah, you mentioned that earlier, eh? And um, because another thing happened, another um, Green Party PM <laughs> went down this week. So I think her name is, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, shit. What's that? Another Green Party MP, she went down because her husband owns a um immigration immigration company they help um the immigrants come through get their working visa and all that kind of stuff well mm. they've been ripping them off and um and she says she's she, she didn't know anything of, about it because that's her husband but then um she actually told the the green party mps her bosses about it and they said oh we'll look into it and they the problem is they took too long to sort it out because this happened a few weeks ago but then she only got fired like this week or must have happened a few months ago and she only got fired from the green party this week so they're criticizing the green party for taking too long to sort it out and plus it's conflict of interest when you have mp yeah, yeah. mp involved with immigration stuff which is you know a government yeah. kind of thing and and the, and and, the, and and she's ripping off the tourists man all the people that are coming <laughs> into the country man it's like what's going on man there. some uh some corruption going on or, but, well, remember, uh, no, labor was doing it. remember labor was doing it eh? they were calling the special favors to to help fast track some people coming in from overseas and stuff like that mm. and those ministers got caught out man and they had to stand down lost their position some of them but like in true labor form they let them have a explanation to come forward and tell the party as a whole before it became public notice and news I mean, if this government's being clean slate, like I say, nah, fuck it, there's no such thing. Well, nothing should change, man, if that's their policies going forward. And I don't want to mention that, but the most famous one from from those who are full of field. Remember that one? Oh. <laughs> Wasn't it like uh, immigrants doing his house or something? Yeah, the workers, like, eh? Free labor. Free labor. <laughs> really. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think everyone, everyone's got that bit of you know, hush, 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 hush. We'll, we'll see how far we can go before we make a public notice. You know, <laughs> I think. And the crime in that is not how long you can keep it quiet. This is when you get caught. You know, that's what, that's simply yeah. it. Yeah, because the problem is your 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 government um official. You're like servant yeah. to the people and you're mm. you're ripping off the people at the same time so that doesn't look good eh? doesn't that look case, good on your cv like, you're just ripping off the people who don't belong here <laughs> you're a lawyer and you do shoplifting how does that work um but nah man nah yeah you're right man the green party has uh suffered some blows this year with the passing mm -hmm. of official <laughs> you know rest yeah, in man. peace yeah. and now with two um two two criminals and <laughs> two and collected, collected, uh, uh, you know, you're going to wonder whether they're going to be there next time, you know. <laughs> but you know, I'll say this, man. I'd rather that. 
I rather these three, then rest in peace, official, and then the Tamaki guy getting into Parliament, bro. Once that guy and his wife, oh, bro, bro, <laughs> we all going to hell, man. We all going to hell. <laughs> the whole nation, bro. Right. What the fact that they shoes up on the Tesla? Oh well. Sweet. All right, boys. Uh, I think that's done with the politics side of things. Now, um, man, the biggest news everyone's talking about, or in our circles anyway, the Jake Paul and David Tua fight potentially. Bro, we, all know, we, we all know about the Mike Tyson. It came Jake out of Paul. his mouth. Oh, shit. Damn. I thought it was like a voiceover. I thought it was First, a voiceover. <laughs> you know what? I don't want to. I know what the answer is, but I want to get you guys' views on the Mike Tyson and Jake Paul event. It's going to be on Netflix. Man. But wait, I just want to say, I I still think out of all these fights Jake Paul's had and won, it's all, it's all, it's all scams, man. It's all set up. Mm-hmm. He's paying them. I pain. mean, yeah, I mean, if I was, um, what's his name? Uh, Who's the champ? Hasn't lost. They beat. Mayweather. Oh, if, so- I, if I was Mayweather and I'm retired, you know, and I got offered 100 million, 200 million, 500 million dollars to take a fall. Man, I'll do it, man. Because they'll say, yeah, but it's not going to count in your record because you're retired, so it doesn't matter. It's an exhibition match. You get 500 million dollars. Take the fall. I'm taking the fall, mate. I'm taking the fall. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way I think Jake Paul is doing it. You know? Yeah. But I, I mean, don't that's know, my man, opinion. Because did you watch the Silver fight? He fought Anderson Silver, right? Did you see that fight? Yeah. He fussy them, bro. Legit caught him, eh? Like, it was only eight rounds. And Jack Paul's actual fighting stance, his ability to move apart from getting, like, he gets a bit flustered when he throws more than four or five punches. It looks like his feet are in the wrong place. It's like his feet become static, but his hands are moving. But the opponent, it's like he's trying to chase the opponent. If that makes sense. It's like he's playing stuck in the mm. mud, but his hands are still going. But his feet haven't moved. But when he's close, bro, and when he's in range, bro, and he lets his hands go, like he caught Silver with a clean uppercut, and Silver looked like, fuck, he was gone. Like he didn't want to be in there, eh? But I think whether that was, like, um, rigged or not, but he legit looked hurt, eh? Like he actually hurt him, man. Like even come the end of the round, like he, he, bro, he looked like he was, he didn't want to be in the ring. And I don't know if you can, like a true champ like Silver, bro, who, who was like this than two years ago in the ring with Alessandra. Fuck. I don't know if that was staged. But I think um, if he fights Tyson, I reckon he'll do pretty good against Tyson. I don't think Tyson's got that killer. He doesn't have like George Foreman power at that yeah. age. Like George fucking, George was still legit, man. He, it's like he still had concrete blocks in his gloves when he fought at like 48 plus. And if Tyson's like, well, almost sixty, I don't think he's gonna. I think he's he's sort of got that mindset like the mind's young, but like all of us, bro, the mind's the muffle foul, like the way you think is through Kamaki, but the king was already yeah. aged, bro. So for JP to yeah. jump in the ring with him, bro, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a scary fight. I reckon for the the fans of Mike Tyson. Yeah. But in terms of him fighting, trying to call out David Tua straight after, I think that's a wrong move, man, because there's a huge, there's a huge difference between the, the conditioning that Dave's in right now as to what yeah. was, um, what we last saw David, you know what I mean? So, fuck, yeah, I reckon big mistake, man. But I hope Dave gets offered that same amount of money, man. Like, if he's going to say a hundred a hundred mil, fuck. I'm, I'm gonna right. get. I'm gonna get asked Dave if he needs some cleaners for his gym. <laughs> Jack Paul's a niche yeah, fighter. Jack Paul's a niche fighter. So you think about all the fights he's had, the retired champions, mm. you know, they're past their, past, way past their primes. They're old, you know. Look, look, like you said, like Tyson's only sixty. Mm. David Tua's past his prime. You know, mm. what's the benefit of fighting these guys, these legends, other than the money? But, but you know, is that all? Is that all? I mean, is that all you want your your legacy to be? YouTuber that fights these old guys, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, if you're like serious, why don't you do it for real? Yeah. Go go box the champions right now. And the division, yeah. You know. But I think 
all what he's done though is that if if Floyd didn't do what he done with the crossover fight and then the um with the McGregor fight, if he hadn't have done those two fights, these fights wouldn't have been of any interest to anyone. But because it's obviously trending and because Jake Paul's got a huge following, he can yeah. afford to. He doesn't need to, like 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 even like the Francis Nagawa fight, like when that happened, people wanted to watch it because look what Floyd and um Connor did, you know. But it's just entertainment, that's the thing. It's got no real merit though, that's how I feel. It's got no real merit like in terms of like Joe Joe Parker and like Andy Ruiz, you know, like two guys who've been champs and then been stripped and then they're making their way back up. Because if you look at the numbers, bro, like man, everyone wants to watch these fights, eh? Like yeah. think, and like the fact that they get the ringside um like um showtime to actually exclusively introduce the fights, that's what makes it even better, man. Is that you get the you get the whole shebang, you know, you get the you get the music, the walk in, you get the lights, showtime, the lights come on, it's like it's it's just entertainment, man, and people want to watch it. Mm-hmm. And I think what the good thing it's done for the sport is that even kids would want to watch it, you know? All his his fans, like from kids from like being five, six year olds to like probably twenty year olds now, they want to watch it, man. They want to watch boxing, so it's giving boxing a good rap. Yeah, it's it's funny watching too, like I've been watching the Tyson trainings on Instagram, <laughs> like he, you know. Watching those trainings, he's he's gonna murder Jake Paul. But yeah, like like what Liz was saying before, like the mind might be young, but the well, the, you know, that's just like ten seconds of hard out punching you see on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. But those those are like what are the three minute rounds or something? No, nah, three minute rounds. Different story. Because see, where was Francis Nangawa's fight when he fought um Anthony Joshua? Where was that Marlosi and his punches when he got dropped those two times in the fight? It was yeah. nothing, man. And Mike Tyson trained him, eh? And Mike Tyson's the one who trained him, yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> you guys think David Tor should go? Just Absolutely, get, some man. For his, get some pay packet for his, uh, his longevity on being, you know, the people's champ? Dave's wife, bro, he's already a Hall of Famer. He's already the best pound-for-pound pound heavyweight boxer that's come from this side of the world. His wife should be on the phone saying to Jake Paul, you know, you pay our whole family to come over and stay at the um, Grand Hotel top penthouse suite for the month. Wife's we'll be there in a happy, man. And then we can negotiate the fight, the contract. I wouldn't be trying to sign any... I wouldn't even involve any Eddie Hearns or any other promoters, you know? Al Heyman and that. I'll be going, nah, let's do this direct, man. Fuck the other, fuck the middle guys. You don't need them. Pay for the penthouse suite. We'll fly over in Vegas. We'll be there. Let's, how about we put a, um, a little, um, undercard together? Like, get, you know, get all the, um, like stack the card, man. Why not stack the card? It doesn't even have to be the feature fight. But they could do it. They could do it. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, they've already cracked numbers, man. So it's just a numbers game, man. Eh? If Dave was like the second to last fight, or even if he was the opening fight, people would just be there just to watch that fight. I'd love yeah. David to go do it just to get that pay. Eh? Oh yeah, bro, he deserves it, man. He for him and his it. family, you know, for all the shit they went through with, with the deals, he, the bad but deals yeah, he made all back the in the days. Like, yeah, like that alone, that that contract alone would make Kevin Barry go, "What the fuck? Damn! Like, where are you now? Where are you now?" Oh, so if he went across, you could imagine like Dave taking Shane Cameron, Mark Mark Hunt, with him, you know, Ray Siffle. Oh, he'll take that yeah. corner. He'll take a corner like that with him. You probably bring Jason Sati if you're free. Oh, so he'd make a field there of it, man. Because when Sonny Bull jumped on the ring, fuck, he didn't. He would. He would never have imagined that he was gonna fight Mark Hunt and then David Tull was in his corner. Like he would never have prayed that much that something like that would ever happen. And he thought he was gonna win. Like, come on, you see? Yeah. But it goes to show, you know, it's like, bro, where someone's at the moment in the sporting sporting world, it's like, this is not the time to sort of play title foot with us, you know. But you can imagine if they took a a solid team of ex guys just to hype up the fight, man. Probably yeah. be me. Everyone would be watching that, man. Bro, they would probably have a a massive screen at Apia Park 
Yeah, Waikako Kamas gonna solely this dude and look at the corner. Even imagine that everyone going giving like a minute. Everyone will be tuned in listening to the minute of what Mark Hunt will be saying to Dave in the corner, bro. You're doing good, Uz. Yeah. Just very honestly, man. Just give him a quick little one, two, three, four to the eye. Hey, that'll be me. <laughs> yeah, man. It'll be, it'll be something to watch, eh? And being on, on, on Netflix, I hope it's not a pay per view and it's just normal Netflix TV, eh? Oh, yeah. man. Imagine if they give the all access, Uz. It was like round two. Say, for example, round two was Mark Hunt was going to talk to Dave. Bro, and then they take Mark Hunt aside and they do the whole little black background and Mark's just going, bro, I remember round two. Because the way he writes his book, the way he talks in his corner, bro, he'll be saying, ha, oh, bro, I saw the way Jake Paul was laughing at him, but I was just saying to Dave, bro, just catch him like you call Shane with the rebound punch, bro. Hey, that's all he got to do. That's all he got to do. I'll be mean, bro. But yeah, the confidence in the guy, bro. Shaxx is to say David Tour's name so fluently, eh, you know? <laughs> what a shot, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. What a man, All right. Have you got more to say on that, loves? Nah, just hope make it happen. It'll be good for the people, you know, uh, especially David Tour's and his supporters. I know he's got millions around the world. It'll be good for him. Maybe one last fight, get a massive pay packet, secure him and his family back in NZ. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Okay, boys, uh, moving on. Uh, should we go to Fear Book of the Week? And you got a couple of there up there, eh? Hey, let's. Bro, I don't know what's wrong with the world at the moment, bro, but they just seem to be putting themselves out there like that, eh? <laughs> um. So the first fear poker, first fear poker is... Is that the golf one? Yeah, so... So I'll, I'll, play, I'll, I'll, I'll play it, I'll play it. Um... So it's when you think you're a professional golfer. Ali. Have no fear, for I am with you. I have called you by name. And it went like... Yeah, Mali. Yeah, wait. First of all. There's a reason why the partitions have that distance between where you put the the T and where the striker is there. <laughs> yeah, first of all, see his technique, silly. He wasn't even straight, man. Yeah. He was like... Yeah, he, was, he wasn't even straight. <laughs> he was like, I don't know what he was. He reminded me of those, you know, those Samoan when the ladies do in Kinikiki when they roll the when they, they the instead ball. of falling at overhead, they yeah, they roll the ball. He was just sweeping, bro. Yeah, to his mom back in the day would have been like the um, Ranoi PIC opening better, the way her technique was, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, listen to any chance to go to the golf, the drive range, eh? Don't be the fear poker going like this. Don't, don't <laughs> do that. Otherwise, you'll be at the A&E with that guy. Bro. They look sore too. Oh, bro. If that doesn't leave a scouts, when he gets the next, his next fade, and he's got a and the power about it, line scar on the back of his head, yeah, he's going to be like, oh, man, you know what happened? And the other few pokers um of a of a Maori chick, she's um she's got a what looks like a nice beamer. And um yeah, it's obviously got an exhaust. It sounds like I like got three and a half exhaust Magnaflow exhaust underneath her Garvalli and she goes, Do you like the sound of that? You downpipe on my car, it sounds so good. Yo, rev it, rev it. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yo, you're you're hitting the brake. Oh. Oh, my if your car's auto, there's only two pedals on the floor and it's the exhaust, it's the accelerator and the brake. Oh, right. I don't know where she got her license, but it clearly wasn't Westgate um in <laughs> the testing station, that's for sure. It's funny how she was confident, like 
when she put her head out the window smiling. Oh, it, was the, <laughs> it was the smile for me. <laughs> <laughs> then the oh what? <laughs> oh, and then um, I think yeah. To be honest, when I first saw the Jake Paul call out David Tour, I thought that was shit butts. But it wasn't until I actually saw the video of him actually going, "Yeah, man, I want David Tour." I'm like, damn. <laughs> The confidence of this man. So I don't know of those three guys who I would, I would um, crown Fear Pocket of the Week. Also, I leave it to you, Stu, man. Who would you crown um, Fear Pocket of the Week? I'll give it to the girl. <laughs> the girl. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Because okay, I get the um the golf thing. Because you know, as Islanders, it's not our sport, right? It's not our sport. So I'll give them a pass. I'll give them a pass, but yeah, yeah. To not know what the break is to the gas. Come on, mate. Yeah, accelerator. <laughs> do it, you do it. <laughs> yeah, so our uh, fear poco of the week goes to the girl with the blacked out matte black beamer. She's a nice looking cartoon. Mm. Yeah. Bitch, all the boys at Magnet Flag is also be going, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, boys, shut up, boys. Um, I just want to go back to um the the sports one. So, Spencer Lingyu, he got um eight weeks suspension. That was a result of his hearing, um for the racist slur he had to Israel man back in round zero in Las Vegas. Um, but also other stuff came out. Like so, so apparently um Israel man said or someone said racist slurs to. Especially you before that event happened, but he didn't say anything because he was saying, "Oh, we're on phone, we don't snitch," that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. But what? What? I think what you put up on the on the on the page, uh, let's was um, the hearing itself. So, the NRL. Oh yeah. Through the ignorance of of whatever, trying to be, you know, they like to be righteous, saying that there's no racism allowed in our game, you know, no ignorance. But then the guy that was the NRL guy that was uh, at the hearing with Spencer Lingyu, he he said some wrong stuff. He called Spencer. He, his name was Spencer Luai, in reference to his uh, ex uh, teammate uh, Jerome Luai, and he said that Spencer is is Tongan or played for um, <laughs> yeah, or played for Tonga. So you know the um the. The Sydney Roosters actually put a complaint, filed yeah. a complaint against that. Well so, done. So they should have, man. Yeah. So yeah, they should have. I think what that what's highlighted, um, and that's probably going to be the only time I bet for this guy. Because any time I'm going to bet for this guy is like never once should you ever go to a work hearing and they should pronounce your name wrong, and what position you are within the organization itself. So good on the Roosters for picking up some stuff like that. Apart from them. Apart from him admitting that, yeah, it was a racial slur, they could probably get lesser time, and then for it being a first-time offence. Like, they could have made a, a big deal of it, you know? They could have used him. I mean, you heard the greats like JT in there saying, like, he should have got more than that. He should have got, like, three months stomping that sort of shit out. But then now the big organisation that he's trying to defend is fucking the this to him. That's fucking... That doesn't even come in... <laughs> that's nowhere near monkey to me. As a Pacifica man, being Samoan, if they'd have got my last name wrong, fuck, I would be shooting for the fucking top, man. So the CEO owes Spencer and the Roosters an apology. And he, the apology should go further. It should go an apology to the Tor Samoa Rugby International Board, as well as the coaching staff. Because no one wants to hear that shit. Like, you know, this guy's got a track record, man. And so the track record should never affect how they should have addressed him in the, in the judiciary. So, nah, yeah. Good on the Roosters for picking it up, eh? Because... That's not right in itself, too. Enough of the fucking, um, he should have got Dust, Latrell, and JT to shut the fuck up and move on because he's been in the room when they addressed him. So that's where that belongs. Your thoughts, Alf? No, um, oh, that's, bro, that's the biggest fail. How can you, how can you not know who the player is and what country or origin that they come from? So they not, not any of that. They had like a few days to fucking do it. Are you, telling me, are you telling me from when he left Las Vegas to fly all the way into the courtroom they didn't know who the fuck they were talking about? That's obviously a premeditated 
already are fucking. We know we're talking about. They're, they're talking about Dream Noy. Those are two different players. Come <laughs> on, that's just racist as fuck, bro. Right. He just highlighted how racist the the NRL was, man, and good on him. That's stupid. How about the eight weeks? Do you guys agree with eight weeks? After hearing this leak, yeah, that's eight eight weeks. The the month fucking. Just um, Justin, Jonathan Thurston, and they, they can shut the fuck up because if that happened to you, or if that happened, say that happened to one of the indigenous players, and it was the other way around, would they be screaming and shouting, not addressing the proper the proper name? Because that's straight off the bat racist in itself, man. They've obviously got mm. two players confused, and then to shit on him by saying, "Oh, he didn't play for Australia; he played for Papua New Guinea." How does that sound? Yeah. It's not right, man. You know. So the eight weeks happens to four. Well, well. I don't think it was too long. I think they had to make an example of someone. Yeah. Uh, when, when when all of this comes out, and then the fact that man doesn't want to face to face. Well, come on, you can't force. You can't force the apology. So eight weeks is gonna fit. Well, it'll be interesting to see them in case play the Roosters. They when is that round? <laughs> we'll see that one. It's actually round seven when Lingyu is still suspended. So he will have two more rounds. So he'll be back <laughs> just after the Magic round, eh? Yeah. So he'll be back the next game, which is against the the Warriors. Maybe that's why they put him out that long. I mean, so he comes back after they don't face the um, Umpires. Yeah. They work well. Hmm. Okay, boys, uh, man, that, that topic with Ling Yu and the racist slur, man, that's gone on for ages, eh? Yeah. And then you blame NRL for taking too long to sort it out, eh? That's why everyone's been talking about it for this long. I mean, we're, we're nearly finished round two, eh? We're just yeah. almost round two, so. Was that more than three weeks ago? Three more than three weeks, weeks yeah, yeah. But I think so that, um, there, should, there needs to be some, like, um, vo- involuntary sort of sort of work within the clubs and even the NRL as a whole because of this is something that's come up and it's taken that long to, to iron out it's clearly a hole in, in, in the organisation and, and what you know what each individual might think of is, is better you know because if, if the few plays beforehand something was said to him Spencer and that's nothing and he's, he's had to say well, I'm not a snitch well, that's something that the NRL guys that sit in the office don't know about because they're not on the field, you know? Yeah. I've seen Mundine um, and Latrell Mitchell went back, uh, back and forth, eh? Mm. And that's an interesting take because they're both indigenous, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And and um, and Mundine saying hard enough to Israel Man. Basically, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. And here's and here's Latrell the same same sort of um same minority, yeah. Yeah. So it's not a so when it comes to race, it's like almost like yeah, it's race, but within the race you got different ideas going on too. Mm. You know? So hmm. It's interesting. It's I said on the post it's interesting this whole racist thing and there's no there's no white people in there. <laughs> you know, I know. Bastards. Okay, boys. Um, we got a food review here, Aidlitz. Oh, yep. I got a food review, man. Oh, sorry. I've got two actually. Um, first ones. I don't know if you know of the place in Henderson. Oh man, I hate, I hate that I can't remember them. But if you drive through Henderson, you see the bamboo spa. Then you see to the left there's a bar there, and it's a restaurant. It's called the Alanel Barbecue. So me and my good mate Sonny went and tested our um, on our date after our date at the spa. We went over and had a feed. So we went and got daily tea. Um I think Sonny got like a iced coffee with no pearls. I got the slushy was it a pineapple slushy with um pearls, eighty percent sugar. And then we walked across and got um the barbecue meal. So the barbecue meals they got a couple there. They've got a uh, lamb meal or they have the smoke I think it's ribeye ribeye and chicken meals they got three and then you can either get a mix it comes with like three sides a coleslaw 
a uh, mac and cheese or well, macaroni sort of type salad or um a side of fries or rice so price wise these guys are like 30 bucks for the mixed meal um I don't know, I sort of felt like, man, is it enough, you know, because, you know, you know, you like, oh, you know, because you know, two big guys going at it, and I was like, so I got a kiwi breakfast, so the kiwi breakfast, man, all day breakfast for two, is fourteen fifty. it was fourteen fifty. it was two eggs, two hash browns, I was, yeah, two eggs, two hash browns, two pieces of toast, it was like four strips of bacon, some, um, baked beans, and, um, there's something else. Oh, and a uh, and a small, like like a handful of mushrooms. So we added that to our barbecue meal, and they cost me about fifty bucks. So Sonny paid his one, and bro, we went at it, man. And the chicken, bro, the chicken in this place is only sick. Yeah, I saw more, bro. I think if you're going on a date, us, and you know your your gang doesn't eat much, bro, you just say, look here, I'll get us, I'll order for us, and you order the sides of mac and rice. And you can pretty much put it on that plate, and she will love it, man, because the chicken's nicely done. It's it's like a um, I don't know if you've had Japanese styled slow cooked chicken, but it's tender, it's sweet, and it hits, man. It doesn't matter what you eat it with; it hits, man. It doesn't need any salt or anything. It just goes down well. But the ribeye in this place, I've been to Hawaii and I've had it. Um, in Alamoana, in the park that they've got the um Alanao barbecue, but because I haven't had it in a long time. Still gold, eh? Um, but here's my star rating, man. Here's my star rating out of five, man. Compared to the um the Alanao barbecue that I've had in in Hawaii, because the last time I was there, I ended up dropping my oh, what nationality are you? And like they ended up giving us a few more extra things. But in comparison to the one in Hawaii, I'm gonna say it's a four and a half, man. Four and a half stars out of five. Whoa. Um, just it didn't take long. It's like probably like maybe ten minutes. We waited. And they bought it out, piping hot. Um, yeah, apart from the the go of the drinks in there, because like two to three dollars for cans, but the meals, eh? The meals are big, man. Worth it, Worth it bro. Mm. I think if I was just being polite, like in me and Sonny could have probably shared just the double the breakfast and the um and the mixed meal just between us, because um yeah he was tapped up after he finished like two of the ribeyes. And all the chicken, he was tapped, like he was gone. And I was looking up, okay, come on, bro, like, can't waste the money. So we spent like another yeah. 20 minutes just sitting there, just trying to finish it, you know? So it didn't want to look wrong, like giving it back or asking for takeaway. But yeah, man, that place is gold, man. It's the strip in Henderson, it's across the road from, uh, it's next door to the, the bed place. And, um, yeah, I forgot the name of the place. I don't, it used to be the old players in Henderson. Oh, well, there's pokies in there. And there's pokies in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, uh, I mean, at the moment, man, go during the day where it's not, it's, it's empty as man. But yeah, they oh, no, it's still on, man. The the meal. Um, and another one. Um, I didn't go in, but my wife picked me up something to eat from there. But it's a place called Huckleberry Revitalized Cafe in uh, Portage Road, New Lynn. So my wife went out there. One of her friends, Lana, and her partner Sam. They own a um a cafe in Newland. But yeah, she bought me a bagel. You know what I mean? The bagels? But this bagel is like um it's probably like the same size as a CD disc. La Poa like that. But yeah, inside the bagel is it's a so it's a BLT bagel with avocado, aioli and, and feta. But it's bigger than a Big Mac. Bigger than a Big Mac. It's pretty, it's like the same size as a Whopper. That's the one I'm gonna compare it to. But like mm. I didn't heat this up. I just had a cold, man, because I was I woke up and I was like, oh, my wife goes, oh, I got you a bagel. So I tasted this bagel, bro. And this is gonna be my new segment, man. If anyone can find me something that tastes like this cold, that's BLT, bro. Out of five stars, oops. Apart from the lemon that's in the avocado, I didn't salt it, but I had it. This is the winner of bagels, man. This is the winner of bagels, bro. I'm gonna hit it with five stars, eh? So if you've, heard this clip, if you've heard this clip and this gets snippet, go and test it, man. I don't know the exact number, but it's on Portage Road. It's next door to a Smokey's barbecue place. But go in there and have one, man. It's got like, um, I think it's got seeds on the bagel. But man, it's the way it's put together. It's freaking on, eh? Freaking on, man. That's the barbecue, bro. So 
Yeah, you can support those guys. Huckleberry Revitalized Cafe, man. Nice. I was like, I was like, because you know when you eat, or you know when we eat, suddenly I'm like, oh yeah, I'll go make me a sandwich. I had the Sunday I was by my own, man. I was like, shit, that hurt good, bro. That hurt real good. Damn. I'd be <laughs> fucking too so Nah, it was good, man. Like, it makes me want to buy them. But the thing is, you might get thrown off by the price, but don't worry about it. I already told you what it tastes like, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, five stars for me for their um, their bagel, man. Nice. Oh, revival. Nice. It's called the Revival Bagel. So, yeah, go check it the out. Revival Bagel. Okay. Yeah. Man, any bagel that's bigger than a Big Mac must be nice, man, already. Has to be, bro. So, that's... <laughs> so how much? With your 15 grand. How much is it? Yeah, you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's 20 bucks. It's 20 bucks. Mm. But, bro, compared to a Smash Patty burger from Club Men's, the um, burger club over here across the road now, that's got nothing on this bagel. Mm. In my So, mm. boys, that's uh, made me hungry. Okay, um, next, <laughs> shall we go to um, what we've we been watching? I'll start with you, uh, Alves. Oh, I've just been watching... Um... I tried to watch his uh, training, his uh, UFC, um, his, uh, his training for his fight. I think he's going to fight today. On his Instagram? No, on uh, YouTube. Oh, I'm yeah. watching it on YouTube. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. It's like a day in my life. Um, yeah, I've been watching his trains. Um, I forgot the name of the gym. Is. It's in Sydney where he lives. Uh, he was an old fighter. Oh my gosh, I forgot his name. Jamie something. An old uh, UFC, a uh, Kiwi fighter that, that's been in the UFC. Not that Tahuna. Uh, oh, I think it's yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the Liverpool gym. The Liverpool gym out of Sydney. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, West, yeah, uh, yeah. Western Liverpool? That's the one yeah, some, yeah, somewhere, yeah, somewhere yeah, there. Yeah. I've been watching the. Um, there's a big guy that. There's a big guy that takes this training. Um, now it looks like a mad, like a mean gym. No, but I've just been watching his trainings, what they, what he's been doing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, just that. I've been just watching that. What's here? Because I know he's got a fight today. Is it spy just want to put on the gloves? Yeah. <laughs> Give it a go to get off the yeah. bucket list. I just need to yeah, get stuff sorted here, get a car, and then I can go out and there's a few um, MMA gyms in Brisbane that I've been looking at. They're keen to go, they're keen to go and have a journey, you know? Yeah. What are you, Miss? What have you been watching? Oh, man. So all the listeners have been... Um... Obviously, listen to me week in week out talk about my um my Samoa sitcom from my Samoa visuals, uh, South Pacific Seas, that I'm Matai. <laughs> it was in sixty four. Oh, man, so shout out to all the actors and actresses that appeared on that man. So when my bro came over on Wednesday, we went to the spa. Like he said, at eleven o'clock. So I was like thinking, oh man, because the the episodes are like thirty minutes, but the last one was like about fifty minute episode, man. So I started watching it and he ended up coming over. So I gave him the rundown on the situation with the um with all the characters, man. But I watched the last episode of my time, man. So like, I cried, bro. It got me good, man. It got me good. It got me good, bro. I was like, and I was laughing because the kids uh, my daughter was like mocking me about why why I was crying. But um if you understand, like uh, uh, the reason why I cried was the it was like the wanting your best for your kids. So you would have heard me talk about like how the um, Fife Fial had his um, daughter set to marry the Aowawa because they were supposed to come into their church and he was going to step down and his daughter and his um, new son-in-law were going to, you know, that's Lorenzo. Lorenzo is supposed to be the, the new son-in-law. But Lorenzo didn't even shout out to the wedding. And so a couple of years passed and the daughter's embarrassed that so she moved in with the Fife Fials, which is her dad's older brother. But then over time, you know, Time heals the five fail sees she will get you to come back home. She comes back home, but this whole time, like her heart's still with Safuyane, like you know, he's a he's got granted a highly chief title and it's a high one from where he's from and the five fail doesn't want that life for her, you know what I mean? 
So he goes on board to look for another guy, another student to marry her. And this guy's a lawyer, man. So this guy was chasing Oketi when she was in Brisbane. And, and then the dad heard that he's a lawyer. So when Oketi moves back home, she says, Oh, look, me and Safiana are going to get married. The dad's like, Yeah, okay. And then the dad goes behind his back and rings the, the lawyer guy who really proposed to his daughter. <laughs> and he goes, I only want one thing, man. I was then after you get married, you go do your ministry papers. So this plays right up to the day of the wedding, man. <laughs> and when you're watching that, eh, all you can do is just hate on the daddy. Eh? But bro, anyone who wants to watch something real messed up, go and watch the episode 64 of Chief Fro, like the Matai. Bloody brilliant, man. Like, and got me in my feels, eh? I was like, fuck, what an ending, man. It's like the best ending that you could ever imagine. But yeah, I was really, like, blown away. Like, just how the storylines just changed. Because, like, within the one uh, production, it's probably, like, seven different storylines. But that was the main oh, okay. one. That was the main one. And it's just amazing how they pulled together all the fast Samoan stuff, all the Ganu stuff. Is it all in Samoan? It's all in Samoan. But it's like, it's like little, like, little, like, bits where... Like, okay, she's like saying to her, Dad, why are you doing this? You know, why are you doing this? Send, yeah, but send me a link or something, I'll start watching it. Oh, spray, I swear, man, I would never be so. I was so happy, you like the way in that I was just like, fuck, bro. And like, as much as I was like angry at the dad on that, I was just like, say, fuck, you know, but yeah, anyone that's watched it. Man, I was about to put the spoilers on my Facebook, but I was like, nah, that's sad. <laughs> but that's got a good ending, man. But yeah, and then I started watching Shorty again, bro. See, shout out to Shorty Street, man. Honestly, Shorty is good at the moment, bro. Shorty is good at the moment. Um, Yeah, I've been watching Survivor, just watching that um, Jalen Lang, the um, Survivor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just laugh, man. Yeah, I just laugh, bro. So he's, he's, I think we're up to the merge. So I'm um, like two episodes behind. But because he's, when he was here, he came, like, I think it was last week or the week before, and he was posted who already left, and he was taking the other contestants. I was like, oh, oh fuck. Yeah. So I stopped watching. So I try to catch up on it today. But yeah, Survivor, yeah. Really, man. It's a pretty hard case. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I've been watching. <laughs> what have you been up to? What you been watching? Man, I posted up on the on the, on the the Facebook page. Um, of, 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 I came across this guy named named Taku. He's a Japanese American. And I think he's one of those guys that are sponsored. He gets paid to go around the world and just, just fish. Cause of, yeah, he's into fishing. So, you know, our people are into fishing, you know, I'm not really into fishing. I just love eating the fish, but man, watching these videos, watching these videos on fishing, man, makes you get into it. Eh? Just, he makes it really exciting, but he's, yeah, he, so the, the video, the first video I found of him, he went to Samoa. So he went to Samoa, he actually stayed in one of the villages and um, fished on the rocks there, yeah. you know? So he was like immersed in the culture, mm. being in the village, doing the umu, helping with the umu and that. And it's just a vlog of him just getting into it like, wow, like, oh my gosh, look how they do the rocks and wow, and you know, he's getting into it. Yeah. He's eating, eating with the families and that, you know, he's really like getting into the whole culture and, and it sort of made me proud just watching that because, you know, tourists, when they go visit islands or anywhere, and they don't do that sort of thingy. They, they just stay at the hotels. They do themselves. They stay at the resort. And Tom Messina and that. <laughs> stay at Tom Messina and just watch the um yes. the performances. And that's enough culture, you know. Yeah. You know yeah. they they, they want to go. They want to go out. They don't want to understand the language, and they just get um, you know, they get they're rude. They might mm. be rude. You know, they don't want to be immersed. They just you know they just want to have a relaxing time, and just yeah. you know, and just go home, you know. But you know, it was, just made me happy that this guy actually. Took his time to go out into the villages and live the life, huh? live the yeah. island life, and he doesn't know anything about it. But man, he's he's doing it like he's he's doing he's helping off the umu and that, you know. And he's just explaining what he's seen on the video, and you laugh because you know we know how to do it like every day kind of stuff. But he's new to it, so yeah. it's cool to get his insight of all that. But but his um show is all about fishing. But yeah. it's cool that he did that little that video in Samoa. It's all about being in Samoa and going on these um hikes. So the so they take him on hikes through through the bushes and that, and all these stream heights and jumping off jumping off waterfalls and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. nah, it's good, man. It's good. But then you know you know and 
when you find a, a cool video on YouTube, you tend to watch all the other videos that, that come with it. Yeah, the ones. So he's got he's got videos in New Way. So he goes to New Way, does does fishing in there, and but he comes to New Zealand too. So he goes to the Coromandel, and and does fishing there too, on the rocks, right? And um, it's just cool, man. It's just he's fishing on the rocks and he's trying to. He caught this massive snapper, like this massive snapper. He catches it, but he said it's too big for him to carry up, up, up the cliff. So he throws it back in. And he's like, but he goes, man, oh man, I'd throw it back in because I can't carry it. But at least I got a photo of, you know, he's, he's videoed him catching this big snapper, massive snapper. Mm. It's big, it's like halfway his size, half his size. Yeah, yeah but yeah, he throws yeah. it back in. He throws it back in because he can't carry it. But he did catch a snapper, like a normal size snapper you get at the store. Yeah, seriously. Oh, I'll just take this one. But he's, he's a chef, right? He's a chef. So at the end of all his videos, his, his, fish, his, his fishing videos, he cooks the fish. He cooks the fish and he shows how he um he fillets the fish, prepares the fish, makes sashimi and all that kind of stuff. But uh, no, it's great, eh? It's good to watch, eh? It's one of those, it's one of those YouTube videos that you don't expect to um, watch the whole thing. Mm. <laughs> but it just, it just, I don't know, it just captures you and you just can't stop watching. It's good, man. It's good. So he's been oh, down well, here. Really? He's been down here, New uh, New Zealand. He's been going around the Pacific Islands. Just going around America and stuff, but no, man. It's called, um, what's it called? It's called Chef Outdoors. Give me a link. The Outdoor Chef. Give yeah. me a link to of that Matai stuff. Yeah, right. Let's have, a, have a gaze, have a watch. Out, it's called Outdoor Chef Life. So if you YouTube Outdoor Chef Life, you, you come across them. Yeah, man, that's that's what I've been watching. Okay, boys, um, should we move on? Oh, um, what's our next one? What have we got? We got a um, memory lane. Memory lane. Oh, yeah, sweet. Oh, yeah. So a um, couple of weeks ago, I saw um, there's a video from Instagram from Fight Fale, and it's a guy who's about to jump on the ring, and his old man's just meeting his shoulders. And it sort of struck a, uh, struck a, like a, one of those uh, memory lanes with me and um, in my old skin, like after our games. <laughs> but um, so the dad, he's just saying a few words before his son, before he goes with my blessing and he jumps on the ring. But he says, um, win or lose. So win or lose, it's just a game. He's talking about the fight. He goes, win or lose, son, it's just a game. And he said, the sun will rise again tomorrow. Like, I remember as a kid, man, my old man, he had a he had a list of advice for me and my mate Ken after our games, eh? And I used to laugh, man, because sometimes we used to like sometimes we would smash teams like I mean like forty six to four or like forty six to like ten. But the games that we like almost lost, you know what I mean? Like we won by like it was like twenty eighteen. Like we just won. But those I remember those particular games is the games that where the 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 advice was like like way like it was too much to like like you know it was like in my mind i should be like oh surely my, my dad's going around and around and around with the same, the same. <laughs> like you know it's like you know if you're gonna book it at the mighty before he got to the line you know or like you know you guys should have been back on side you know pick who's gonna run and chance to kick stuff like that i was like but yeah i was just putting it out there to you guys like did you ever have any games or like I mean, practices where you felt like you were hearing advice and you're like, oh, why? <laughs> like, it was ever killed. <laughs> surely, surely I'm not the only person out around me. Me and Ken go, man, we used to get drenched in it after the games, eh? But, I, like, yeah, when I saw that, I just thought, man, I miss my old man, but I miss how we used to get drenched with, like, advice like that, eh? It's just a game, man. It's just a game. It wasn't the World Cup final, you know? I know what you mean, because I think, um... Johnny two of us checked his um skits on that how the dad always overboard of the advice on that. Yeah. But um nah because because my dad he didn't, never came to any of my of my games, but um I remember a similar thing. You'll do those ones when you're when you when you're watching sports on T V <laughs> and you do the advice like, you know, see son, that's what happened if you you know, do those <laughs> ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. How about you asked? Anything like that? 
these are these are two of these two memories that stick out. I remember when um I it wasn't oh clear my dad never came to any of my days, but I was I remember when my uncle would pick me up to the new because uh, I played um I played lock for his team and um I just went to he was like if you have a good game, you know, I'll chuck, you know, get a hot salt and a sausage and a sizzle after well, he's not a race of hope. <laughs> talks to my, my uncle. Um, yeah, that, like, if he played good, he'll shout us uh, lunch after the games. And I remember this, but there was another, um, another game, uh, another, it was a basketball, that was rugby, but then when I was older, I made, um, I made a free free team of, um, at youth time on the table. Do you remember, you guys remember Robson? Robson Tavita, do you remember Robson? Yeah. Uh, you so, so you know me. I'm like you know I'm like way younger. I was probably like fifteen, sixteen, and they and the Robson they had like you know in their close to thirties, and I made their three or three team. I remember um, there was no motivation, bro. He kept blaming me because we lost. We lost in the semis, bro. Bro, he made me cry. <laughs> the man made me cry, man. And then I told his brother because his brother's my age. Oh, what we learned when he goes, no, I was still worried. So, um, you know, that, that, that incident, the, the moral of the story for that is, um, you know, just stay in your league, eh? Like, <laughs> if you jump up with the big boys. Because we had, um, that's when it was, uh, the breakers just came out, and we had, it was me and uh, Robson and one uh, key, key or New Zealand breaker or, you know, Auckland breakers in or something. Yeah, that'd be youth time, but nah, that's, yeah, when you're in a feed, you know, stick to your age group. Stick to your age group. Stick to your, yeah. That's nice. Was... Sorry, I, I missed the line out from what the Koinga was saying. He said, win or lose, it's just a game. It's not the end of the world. The sun will rise again tomorrow. I like that. Like, I like that. Man, any parent that goes to any of their kids, Kalongas, man, just remember it's just a game, man. And if I bear, <laughs> we are going to die on the result of whether the kids win or not. I know we can always get into that habit of like, hey, my mole open senior, come and yeah. be off to the game, you know? But I think as our, in this day and age, I think that's what our talk is like. You know, it should be like, oh, more encouraging, but... Positive, eh? Positive. But no, I loved, I loved what he said to me. Win or lose, it's just a game. It's not the end of the world. The sun will rise again tomorrow. So, nah, yeah. <laughs> that's crack up. I like that. But nah, Cam's when he said that when you're watching the game, <laughs> solid. Man, if I had a dollar for every time my dad said that about Carlos Pinto, I was like, see, yeah. <laughs> you, know, to, you know, we go up to the club, like, I think Carlos would do his one step back, or Adrian Cashmore would do like the put the ball down, one step back, one to the left, and then he would just kick it over the post. You know, and then the ref will go, boom, run back. Remember my dad would like look at me and he goes, you see how he put the ball down and he just took this, this, back? Oh, wait, like two, three and four and back and then take a long time. I'm like, so, man, this guy's talking like he can kick goals like me. Like, come on, man. <laughs> I, I used to um, take my kicking routine from Matthew Ridges when he was at Manly. That was my, my routine, my kicking routine, eh? But we watched rugby and then bro, my dad's talking. Dad was like, yeah, <laughs> but really... Nah, what was that quote again? Yeah. That quote again, let's... Um, win or lose, it's just a game. It's not the end of the world. The sun will rise again tomorrow. That's good advice for the New Zealand Warriors fans after last night's loss. <laughs> that, uh, oh, bro. bro. What a what an ending to that game, oh, mate. Totally what did. an ending. Did they play the Cowboys, eh? Nah, the nah storm. it was Storm. Oh, yeah, the Storm, oh, yeah. Oh, the storm came oh, back. Fuck. That last try. That last try. So yeah. that was... Only well, two minutes left. Only well, two minutes left. <laughs> Only well, last last play. Only well, fifteen seconds left. Fifteen seconds. Oh. She she man. <laughs> Hello, flight to orders. Worried supporters that flew over to watch their game. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, remember, everything doesn't count till after the what ten games. Ten games, eh? What? Oh, and two doesn't matter. Eh? Oh, and oh, two. two doesn't matter. Oh, and two doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Still got yeah. a chance. But all that highlighted off, give a highlight talent of Queensland, Lofa, Pop, or the first 10 rounds, sorry. Coots in the corner, bro. Fuck. Yeah, they go from um, Parramatta 2, that number 11. 
he's a Queenslander. Didn't he score? I think did he score two tries against the Panthers? Did he score? Or did he set up a couple? It was not that off a hangout? <laughs> no, he's a Falangi guy. Oh, bro, that thing's massive. Eh? I don't know his name. Yeah. I don't know his name. Something Murray. Yeah, he's a unit. Eh? Like he's yeah, and he, he, yeah, he's, he used to play for the Panthers too. Okay. Nah. So like, I'm not, I'm not getting the vegetables because the first 10 games, they matter. Yeah, they matter. <laughs> yeah. They matter, bro. Yeah. Boys, man. It's been a pleasure, man. It's time to wrap up. But, um, man, it's been good to be back on the Inside the Clip. And ha- good to have you back on us. Even though you're yeah, far stop, away, stop, but, boys. you know, still technology allows us to have you on board yeah, again. I know. So no excuses. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, when you get your paychecks, remember to put some away for your, your new microphone that should be coming up. <laughs> yeah, right. Coming up soon, man. <laughs> yeah. Man, send us some copies over. Yo. You can print them out. Oh, hey. Oh. I should email you the thing and you can print them out. A3. Oh, okay. Yeah, both sides. But, uh... Okay, boys, uh, last words. Let's go off. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to take a step. <laughs> Come on, boys. Ready? Three, two. Oh, yo. Um, last words. Uh, um, yeah, back on the grind again. Um, yeah, I'm happy that I just redid my uh, sort of my gym stuff. Go back to training. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I've got work at the end of the week. Doing a couple of sleeping hours. Looking forward to that. And then just wash tomorrow. Yeah, stay mold. Thank you. Um, well, oh, this is the last couple of shout outs. Just want to make a shout out to a notable friend of mine, to Noka. Man, bro's came into my life, and I believe in God's timing, man, when he brings two guys together. The bro's been on my ass, like, it feels like a, like a old, my old man's voice just there. So, like, what's the hell with this? So, we finally got the bubble shop level, man, because I'd been had it on a slant, and he come over with a jack, we jacked it up, took some bricks underneath, so when the CFO of um, the Wessex Network came over, okay, this here, it was like first time it was flush, man. And I told him, why? Why the Fama Lama? The Fama Lama's in line with the post with flushes. And so he come over on Friday late, um, and we got it up, and it was set, man. So it was good time for when the CFO came over. But yeah, man, I just wanted to, like, let guys, um, just anyone, like, who has a group of friends in, what you would consider a good friend and i believe like um, i know me and my friends have been doing those um some of the boys taking advantage of the boys or like not leaning on each other as being real boys but i've just found like um my break and not coming to my life it's just highlighted like what a real mate should be like you know like checking in on each other and and like doing things out of the goodness of their heart without any expectation of something being returned but uh, yeah, yeah i know the return of my bro and it, it makes me laugh because he's got nephews in that that are our age, like when we first met and like the, what we used to get up to back in the day. But uh, he shared a word of prayer with me and, and he also shared like some advice about me worrying about my neighbours and that. And what he said was, he said something like, oh, so these are my final words there. And he goes, don't get worried about the stuff that's out of your control, especially about other people's families and how they conduct things within their own home. But just be bullet about your own household and just you do you because your time on the surface for you to do what you need to do for your family. So when he left those words with me the other day, it sort of like made me realize, like, no, he's right, man. I just got to worry about me and my family and what we're doing, you know. I can't control and get worried over what's out of my control, especially over the family, yeah. you know. So I was grateful for my cousin, for my also giving me those words, man. But um, yeah, once again, man, shout out to the CFO, man, the work he's doing. We can we count, man. I'm grateful for that he finally came in for a cut in the new studio. I feel okay. honoured, felt honoured. One of my good mates was in the studio and he was in there as well. Um, yeah, and just a pleasure to do empty out the clip and have it sounding like the only Pacifica sort of sounding, you know, West Side sounding um, podcast that's out there. So yeah, uh, much love to you both, man. You know what it is. Nice, nice boys. Well, thanks again, boys, for another another week week on EDLTC. 
tune in, uh, everybody. Tune in next week for another another lowdown of the week that was in uh, politics, sports, or, or, or whatever. Have some more fear book of the week for you. I want to get one especially for you, because I know you like that topic fear book of the week. You know, but, <laughs> you know. So I'd like to get your insights on on those. But uh, nah, man, thanks for for coming on. And uh, yeah, man, my final words okay. is hope everyone gets a safe week. Um, I got no no one lined up for back on one five this week. I should get my ass into gear, and since the magazine's out, get some more guests on. So I'll be doing that. So yeah, man, thanks, boys. Let's get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm.